Hello, this is Rich Voltz, the Associate Director with the Illinois Association of School Administrators, and this is going to be podcast 168. On this podcast, we're going to do a tutorial to teach participants how to develop a Google Form classroom walkthrough and teacher evaluation document using an iPad. This is a page on my iPad and this particular page includes the top administrative apps that I would recommend for school administrator use. In this particular case we're going to choose the app Google which is the third from the top in the furthest column to the left. When we touch the Google app we basically get a uh, a direct connection to your own account on Google and you can see on the bottom of the screen there is a button that says apps. If I click on that button up will pop the different apps through Google that are made for mobile devices that I can use and the one in this particular case I'm going to use is Docs which is the third application from the bottom. So when I click on that Docs application what it does at that point is it connects me to the internet and then you can see a variety of files that I have in my account in, in Google. Now the important thing to note here is that most of these software developers have a mobile app as well as they have a desktop app and you can see at the bottom right below where it says qb13lewis at gmail.com that's my gmail address you can see that it says view google docs in mobile which is in black and bold and desktop well, we're going to want to change this to the desktop version so when I click push on desktop on my iPad what happens is Google then opens up a screen that makes it look exactly like my screen would look on my laptop computer or my desktop computer if I had gone to my Google account. So in this case over in the far left hand column you can see a red button that says create. If I touch that create button there's a drop down menu that has document that would be like a, a word processing, presentation, that would be like pages for the Mac or PowerPoint for a PC user, spreadsheet which is like Excel, and form which is kind of a database. And that's what we're going to use for this case. We're going to use form. So when I click on form, up will pop a template of a form that Google supplies for us. So if I click on untitled form, at this point I'm going to want to put in the name of the particular form um, that I am going to be making and whatever name I put in this spot this will be what the file will be saved as. So in this particular case I'm going to call this uh, podcast tutorial form just to give it a name that later on I'll be able to know what I did this for. So that's the name of the form and then you can see that I'll have there's two sample questions that Google lets you to start with and on the right hand side where it says sample question one there's a pencil which would be an edit question there's like two pieces of paper that would be a copy and there's a trash can and that would be delete so in this particular case um, I'm going to want to edit this so the, ed the pencil is already marked that's where I'm at so I'm going to go up to sample question one. I'm going to take that information out and then I'm going to put in at this point whatever information I want to I want to start making my form. So in this particular case since I'm I can assume that I'm a superintendent I'm going to want to know the name of the school that the administrator is using for this particular purpose. So in this particular purpose I'm going to choose choose from a list and then I'm going to put in here the names of the schools 
in my district. So in this case, I'm just going to go back and uh, put in the names of the school schools in the district where I was superintendent. Okay, now you can see that I have added all of the schools. I'm going to make this a required question, and I'm going to say done. My next question will be, uh, if I was a superintendent, uh, the next thing I'm going to try to do is I want to put down uh, who, who the administrator, what the administrator name is. So I'm going to put in here administrator name, and then I'm going to just make up some names and put it in here from a choose from a list um, like I did earlier. So let me just put in a, a couple of names here as an example of how this might work. And I'm going to make this a required question as well. Okay, so you can see I've started making a form and later on, by the way, the reason I use this drop-down list is because later on what I can do is I can disaggregate this data depending on what the particular person who's filling out this form, um, how whoever fills that out, like the high school, the administrator's name, etc., I can disaggregate the data later on as this goes into a spreadsheet. So I'm going to add another item. In this particular case, let's say I'm, it's going to be a multiple choice item. So my uh, third question might be, um, are students intellectually engaged in their own learning? And for an answer, I'm going to make that multiple choice. And it's going to be yes or no. I'm going to make this a required question. And I'm going to add another item. It's also going to be multiple choice. And the question will be if students are engaged, what are they doing? And then at this point, I would make up multiple choice type answers of exactly what these students are doing. So you can see I have added uh, a variety of multiple choice choices about students' engagement in their work. So really this goes from most engaged to least engaged, but I'm using teaching other students how to do the work, practice doing the work themselves, discussion with others about the work, demonstrating their work, viewing others doing the work, reading about the work, or listening to the teacher lecture about the work, and then finally the potential for other if something else is occurring in the classroom. And let's say I was just using this for a classroom evaluation form. Okay, at this point I have completed what I'm going to do for the evaluation uh, classroom walkthrough form because I'm going to make this just a short drop-in uh, classroom walkthrough opportunity. So the final form is going to look like the form that you are seeing on your screen right now. That the administrator can come in, he can uh, choose the name of the school, the name of the administrator, determine if students are, are intellectually engaged or not, and then if they are engaged, uh, what are the students doing at this particular point in time. So at this point, you can see on the top, there are some tabs, email this form, see responses, more actions. Well, I'm going to make sure I save the form. And then at this point, you really could email this form. So you could just choose email this form, and then you could email it to who you want, and you'd send the email. So then you as an administrator, for example, if you send it to yourself, you would just go to your form, and this exact uh, form would, would pop up for you. Now, when you go back to your Google Docs homepage, you're going to see that that's going to be one of the files that is saved. So you can see that it's called Podcast Tutorial Form. So if I click on that 
podcast tutorial form, this is something about Google Forms that you need to learn, is that this information comes back to you in a spreadsheet. But again, we're on the iPad, so the spreadsheet really isn't showing. But up on top, in blue, you can see it says, Go to Spreadsheet View. If I click on Go to Spreadsheet View, then I can continue to desktop version or return to mobile version. So I'm going to continue to desktop version. And then this, again, is taking me out of the mobile version and is bringing me to the desktop version. So at this case, in, at this place in time, you can see we have a spreadsheet, and it starts with columns timestamp. That would be whenever you actually do the work of answering the form, the information will start getting fed into that, actually the, the date and time that the answer was given. And then it will enter in school name, administrator name, and then answer the questions that we had asked. I'm going to fill in some of these blanks um, in a minute just to show you how that works. Okay, in addition, up on the right-hand side, you can see that there's a share button. Now, you have to be very careful about this. You're not going to want to share from the spreadsheet unless you want the person you're going to share this information to to get all of this information. So, um, in this particular case, you may or may not want that to occur. Uh, but remember that if you have any particular information about teachers or whatever in here, then um, that's all going to be exposed at this particular point in time. The other thing you can do is you can, you can in, from this spreadsheet, one of the tabs is Form. So I'm going to click on Form, and when I do, there becomes a drop-down menu that says Edit Form, Send Form, etc. Well, Edit Form means I get to go back to the form and make some edits. Send form means that I can actually send the form. That's what you're going to want to do if you want to share this form with others. You can go to the live form itself, and later on we're going to show you how uh, the, this Google Docs actually um, graphs and charts this information. But one thing I've noticed on this form that we didn't do is we didn't put in the teacher name. So what I'm going to do is hit on edit form. It's going to bring us back to our uh, page and I'm going to add an item in this case. In this case, again, I'm going to use a choose from a list because it's going to be the teacher name. So I'm going to type in here teacher name, and then I'm going to add uh, some teacher names to this list that uh, might be teachers in the building, and I'm just making up names here that uh, you would have potentially um, had these walkthroughs. I'm going to make this a required question like we did earlier and then I'm going to move this particular teacher name up. Now again on a laptop it'd be easier you right click and on the iPad you just hold down and move up this item to the place where it needs to be. Okay, you can see that I have added teacher name. I'm at back at the spreadsheet view, but the teacher name uh, on the form itself is going to be after the administrator name, but you can see in this column format, it really is at the place where I entered it, which is after I did that. Uh, but that's okay because you can disaggregate that data, but I just want to show you what it would look like uh, when we go to the actual form itself. You can see that the teacher name is in the correct spot. So since I've made this addition, I'm going to email this form again uh, to myself, and then when I get this form on my uh, smartphone, for example, if I'm in the building, I would just go to my email, and I would pick up this form, and I'm going to enter in some data. So I, that's what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to enter in some data so that when we go back to see the data that is entered, that you're going to see that there's going to be some actual data information that is going to go in to our timestamp that in real life happens as you're doing it. So as I'm talking right now, I'm actually entering some information. So I'm putting in middle school, and I'm putting in that the, the teacher's name is Lewis, or the administrator's name is Lewis, the teacher's name is Smith. I'm going to say I did see engaged learning. As a matter of fact, I saw students teaching others as part of this engaged learning. 
I'm going to submit that information to the internet and I've just done that on a phone and almost instantly when I submitted it you heard me talking about it you you can see that it, it has come in on the internet so when I'm on my phone I can if I'm going classroom to classroom I can just say submit another response and sure enough the same information comes up and I'm going to just enter some additional information and this time I'm going to say that there wasn't any engaged learning and you're going to see that instantly it comes on there I, I put in Glenwood Elementary School bolts and I said no engaged learning for the teacher named Smith now of course you're going to get lots of responses and really you should have a couple of hundred responses before you would be drawing any conclusions but what Google does it allows you to summarize this information so since I only have two responses in this particular case there's not going to be much information here but you can see that I was in two schools I was in the middle school and elementary school there was two two administrators Lewis and Volts there was two teachers Smith and Lewis one of them was in, had engaged learning one didn't and the one that had engaged learning uh, the students actually were teaching others how to do the work so this is how to use an iPad for Google Forms it's a little bit more cumbersome than doing it on a computer the, the steps are exactly the same uh, but this is just to show you that in fact you can make these forms on an iPad and for sure you could be looking at this data on the iPad or you could be uh, you could be doing the information on the iPad so I'm just gonna go to my email where you just uh, saw earlier where I was entering information so this is how I emailed it to myself and then this is actually what's going to look like if I had my iPad when I was out in the building or um, if I had my phone and, and that's how I was doing this information and again I'm just going to enter this information as it would look on my phone I submit it and then I can submit another response so again I could be in whatever school I'm in I can choose administrator and teacher students are actually engaged their practice doing the work themselves and I'd submit okay let's say I was done with that then as I go back to Google itself and I update the information you're gonna see that I'm gonna now I have additional information for now that I didn't before remember when we were doing it I only had two so you can see how fast this information gets into a place where uh, Google will actually compile the information in the charts and graphs for you. So I hope you have found this tutorial helpful and you will use it in your work as a school administrator. Thank you. This is Rich Voltz with the Illinois Association of School Administrators.